Hello, Sid Roth here with Troy Brewer. And uh, Troy, uh, I have dubbed a new name for you. And you said, well, there's people that know time more than me. I'm going to call you the time man because <laughs> every time I talk to you, it's involving time. It's involving calendars. Um, uh, for instance, we are now in the Jewish year 5782. That started this year. I know the date because it's my birthday also. September wow. 7th is when the Jewish New Year started. Uh, and so it's September 7th, 2021. And on the Gregorian calendar, which the rest of the world operates under, uh, we are entering into 2022. So um, it's it's the Jewish year is 5782. The rest of the world is 2022. But tell me uh, the difference in the two calendars. Why do we need two calendars? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, number one, we need all the help that we can get to stay in sync with the heart of King Jesus. Yes. You know, I... I we need to be people that are led by the Spirit. Um, Brother said, you know, it's a great curse to be out of sync. You know, whenever Jesus showed up, he said, look, you've missed your day of visitation. And he also says this, and uh, over in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, it says that when you're under a curse, in the morning you'll say, I wish it was evening, and in the evening you'll say, I wish it was morning. So it's a curse to be out of sync, and the Lord... The Lord wants us to live with him from moment to moment, from day to day, here a little, there a little, line upon line, and all of that. Yeah, you know you know what I've, I've found out, Troy? Even where things sit as where you live, when I moved from uh, St. Simons Island, Georgia, to Charlotte, North Carolina, our ministry exploded. I am convinced that if I was even in the wrong city, there's timing, but there's the right city at the right time, everything opened up. It was so supernatural. Um, it's So it is, and God is so brilliant that you can go layer under layer under layer and see his divine hand in everything. Yes. Well, time and space were created together. Time, space, and matter are completely inseparable. So if you're going to be in sync with God, you're going to be at the right time, at the right place for the right kind of miracle to happen. And that's that whole principle, as you very know, is Moedim's, right? The appointed seasons of the Lord where he says, at a certain time, meet me at a certain place so that I can visit you with a new layer of a certain narrative, right? So you can't separate time, space, any of those things. The Lord wants us at the right place at the right time, again, for the right miracle to happen. So, Sid, getting back to your question about why do we need two calendars and what's the difference between the two of them? Well, we know that our Hebrew calendar from our Hebrew brothers and sisters, the, the prophetic marker for that one is the moon, and it begins at nighttime and carries on all the way through the night, and then it goes through the day. We know that our Gregorian calendar, the prophetic marker for it is the sun, and it begins at sun up and it ends right again at the next sun up. And one is like God speaking to one group of one group of people. The other is just like the Lord speaking to another group of people. Jesus said that there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and also in the stars. Jesus himself declared that. And in fact, in the 14th verse of the book of Genesis, he says, he says on the fourth day, God created the the sun and the moon and the stars and then he says and he created them from signs seasons days and years so it's supposed to be for prophetic timing when god speaks through the sun brother said he's talking to the nations and it's a word that is going forth through the nations. So the Gregorian calendar has to do with the prophetic word for the nations. And then when God speaks through the moon or the Hebrew calendar, he's actually speaking to his covenant people. And that is either the people of Israel or it's the body of King Jesus. Well, why does God st still want Christians to recognize the Jewish feast? I see many uh, Christians that say, well, that's Old Testament. Right. That's law. I don't want anything to do with it. Well, why do, why do you feel different? 
Because because I, I, I don't mean to be offensive to my Jewish brothers and sisters because they are the stewards of it, but they don't own those feasts. Those are called the Lord's Feast. Those are the feasts of the Lord's, and those belong to all of God's people. It's just that our Jewish brothers and sisters have been faithful to be the stewards throughout the centuries. But do you know that whenever Jesus comes back and then there's the great millennial reign of Christ, once Jesus rules and reigns, he commands the entire earth to keep the feast, both Jew and Gentile. So those prophetic timings are ordered of the Lord. And if we're out of sync with that, then we're out of sync with his kingdom. And an easy way to get in sync with his kingdom is to, observe the Jewish feasts. Now, some of the greatest prophets that I have interviewed over the years have had almost a single voice on certain biblical feasts. And by the way, yes, they are Jewish feasts, but God makes it even stronger. He says, these are my appointed times. They're not just appointed times, There's God's appointed times. And they have all said on Yom Kippur, on Rosh Hashanah, on different feasts, that's when God speaks to me the best. I'm wondering why, why does, why does God speak to us? I mean, he speaks to us all the time. Let's, let's be candid. But why would these great prophets say, this is where my faith lies, that I will hear from God for the following year on these dates? Because the appointed time literally means a prophetic appointment. So if you make an appointment for the doctor, it means meet me at a, at a certain place at a certain time for a certain thing to happen. So whenever the Lord gives us a Moedim, which, which is loosely translated in English, and I mean very loosely as seasons, right? But a Moedim actually means a prophetic appointment, meaning, okay, I have a, I have an intimate appointment with you to meet me at a certain place at a certain time for a certain something to happen. Um, I fast and pray every single Yom Kippur up until last year, whenever we were no longer allowed to travel Mm -hmm. for the past 10 years, I've been in Israel on, on Yom Kippur. And I go there to seek the Lord and to fast and pray and to go to the wall and to cry out to God. And there's never been a time that I have not had a special visitation from the Lord. Never. Um, it's the same way with uh, it's the same way with the Feast of Trumpets. We fast and we pray for the ten days in during the days of awe. And 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 brother said, I'm a seventh generation Texan. I'm a sixteenth generation American. I don't have any Jewish blood in me. I've I I just you know I've done the twenty three and me and looked. And I just knew it would secretly <laughs> spike you know Jewish. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Um, it is just my great privilege to be invited into it. And the Lord has invited me. And how could I say no to him? It's amazing. Uh, you know, it's, but, I, but, but I have to qualify something. It's not okay. legalism. It's no, not it's have not. to. It's tapping into the supernatural. That's yes. how I look at it. No, you're exactly right, and, and and again, especially it has to do with the it has to do with the calendar, and it has to do with like living what I like to call an Issacharian lifestyle. Okay, of knowing the times and the seasons and what Israel ought to do. Okay, well, the easiest way that you can do that is to observe the feasts. The, really, the easiest way that you can do that also too is to appreciate and to keep the Sabbath and to say, "I'm going to keep a holy day." Now, again, this is you're talking about a Gentile brother who's been grafted into the body of Jesus, but it's a special invitation, and I have accepted that, and I'm not legalistic in any way whatsoever. No, no, like like for instance, uh, now to me, the only way I'm going to really observe the feast just because of my schedule and everything else. Right. I mean, I'm Jewish-Jewish. Uh, I, did, I did a DNA with a specialist in Jewish DNA, and they literally found that I'm, that I'm descended from the tribe of Judah. I can't even know the tribe wow. that I'm from. Uh, wow. But the truth of the matter is, the only place a Jew can really observe the feast, in my opinion, is in Israel. The only way the world can be in place is for the Jews to be in Israel. Uh, and that's what we're seeing God orchestrate right now. Come on. Amen. Uh, amen, now, amen. Now, I need you to, to explain to us the importance of biblical numbers. Uh, the fact, like many people aren't aware, that in the Hebrew alphabet, it's not just a letter, but it's also a number. But why... why 
Why are you so interested in the numbers? How, have, uh, how uh, is this some, uh, something that just this generation has found? Or have we been interested in numbers all along in the Bible? Well, all throughout the centuries, it's been one of the major voices of God. And that, then we know that the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, upon the many waters. And one of the great voices of the Lord is how things are measured, how things are numbered, how things are weighed, all those things, all the way throughout the word of God, those things actually glorify the Lord. I do not believe that there's any power in numbers at all. I'm not a numerologist. I am just someone who loves King Jesus. I love him so much. And the weights and the measures, even the very hairs of our head are numbered, right? The numbers of the stars are all numbered. Everything is weighed and numbered and it all glorifies the Lord with a special language of the Lord. So you mentioned that in the Hebrews, among the Hebrews, every single, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. All 22 actually have three different meanings. One is a phonic sound, like any, any letter in any alphabet. The other one is a numerical value. And then, the, and then the third one is actually a prophetic picture. So all three of those, if you're willing to learn that language, God will speak through those. Now, when it comes to the numerical language, it's like, it's real simple, Sid. You know, on this side of the world, we do one, two, three, we have numerals. But our Hebrew brothers and sisters, they don't have that. They actually have the A means a one, a B, C, the B means a two. It goes to 10, then it jumps to 20, 30, and then, then when it gets to 100, it goes 100, 200, 300, and 400. And what that means is every single name that is in Hebrew is also also a number. Every single word is also a number. So when we come across a year like 5782 or on the Gregorian calendar, a year like to like 2022, there are words all the way through the word of God that have that same exact number that are a word for us today. There are actually uh, prophetic indicators all the way through the word. Like one of my favorite ones is this, here we are entering into 222 and the word wisdom is in the Bible exactly 222 times. And see, I believe in the Lord for supernatural wisdom this year. Yeah, you know what? It's like a symphony when you find everything in place. It's like I was yes. talking to someone today that that's that started out as uh, an atheist, and the truth is, I don't have enough faith to be uh, an evolutionist uh, that things just happen from a big bang or something. I mean, yes. you can't even make a watch by shaking the parts up in a shoebox for a million years, L much less a brain. I mean, Come I don't on, have bro. enough faith uh, that, that through the whole thing of evolution, that takes more faith than I've got. <laughs> Well, I can actually see, I can actually see the creator's fingerprint through everything that's weighed and measured and numbered that's going on around us every day, all the time, Brother Sid. And I see, and I'm like, there you are again, King Jesus. There you are again, King Jesus. There you are again. And I love that. It's a part of actually walking out a prophetic lifestyle in the power of the Holy Spirit is being able to see how God is speaking through all the things around you and say, now the kingdom of heaven looks just like that. I don't know how an atheist or someone cannot see those things, but I want to see it in every single part of my life because I don't want any part of my life that I can't see Jesus in. Okay, let's go back to something you said because it's so important and we kind of slip okay. by it about this is the year of wisdom. Explain that. Hmm. Well, prophetically, now look, we know that there's God always has wisdom for his people, but there are times where God will literally pour out his Holy Spirit to be made manifest in the form of things like simple solutions to complicated issues, where he says, I'm gonna give you a special grace for wisdom now. Now, wisdom is an upgrade of several, of several different things, but wisdom is actually found in the faith realm because the foolish has said in his heart that there is no God, right? Mm -hmm. So that wisdom and faith increase at the same exact time. And so I'm believing again with all my heart that this is going to be a year where the glory of the Lord is seen within the realms of wisdom, which means 
Uh, I'm believing that God's going to give us creative answers to very difficult things. Amen. Like I said, simple solutions to complicated issues. I'm believing the Lord for that. I'm also believing a supernatural wisdom to bring the kind of glory of the Lord or how we carry the presence of God into every situation in the sense of like Acts 2.22 has all three words, signs, miracles, and wonders. You know, the Bible says in Daniel 2.22 that God likes to reveal the secret things, that these secret things, that there's actually a wisdom for us now. I'm looking for those kinds of things to begin now in this season. I don't want people to miss out on this. What you, what he has just said is the year we're entering into, 2022. Yes. So when he says those three twos, they all have significance. It's not just yes, like a fortune cookie. It's God. Yeah. It's not some right. little, uh, little, little man with uh, powder and water making a cookie. No, no, <laughs> it's not. It is. It is totally the Lord. And these things are on purpose. Okay. So, like, like here's something interesting. Um, we're, you know, we just had Thanksgiving, and this Thanksgiving was the 400th American Thanksgiving was literally the 400th. And that's a that is a that is a very specific time frame. A good example of that is is that God told Abraham know of a certain that Israel is going to be in bondage for 400 years and then everything is going to change, right? We know that God was silent for 400 years before Yeshua HaMashiach showed up. So when I look at that, I'm starting to enter in I'm starting to enter in with thanksgiving and praise anticipating that the lord is going to show up and change things this year i don't know how i just understand it according to the moadims or according to the prophetic calendar well the oh, you know what we're beyond politics it's not Amen. getting the right man or woman in office right. although i believe no, we not. should i mean if there's someone that's more biblically uh godly than someone else then i'm, uh, yes. I'm voting that way but I think this country's beyond that. Yes, Our only yes. hope is God. Such That's a right. great problem. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Jesus is the only boat afloat. And this is what I say all the time. The church can survive without America, but America cannot survive without the church. I heard uh, Mario Miller, uh, Mario Morello, Morello or somebody first say that. And that resounded with me. And I'm just determined the best thing I can do for my country and for my people is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and to be a fearless demonstration of freedom, truth, and the redemption of God, and to be in perfect sync and timing with the heartbeat of King Jesus himself. That's my purpose. That is my assignment. And that's what I'm going after. Let's go back to the two years, the Jewish year and the Gentile year. And what does that mean to us this year? You're, you've given us some insights, but give us a little bit more. Okay, so on the 5782, so this is the year 82 on the Hebrew calendar, a simple exercise is to count from Genesis 1-1, what is the 82nd verse of the Bible? And this is what's amazing, brother. It's about two brothers, and it's Genesis 4-2. It says, and, and again, she bore his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So I first marked that. It's about two brothers. Now, these two brothers are opposed. They're opposed in identity. They are opposed in assignment they're opposed in purpose so i said hmm so then i go to the new testament and then i go to matthew 1 i count 82 right because again it's the year 82 on the on the hebrew calendar and the 82nd verse in the new testament is also about brothers it's matthew 4 18 and it says and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brothers simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were both fishermen so the 82nd verse in the Old Testament talks about two brothers who are not about the same thing. And those are the wrong brothers to be a part of this this year. But the 82nd verse of the New Testament talks about two brothers who were doing the same thing. They were both fishermen and Jesus is in the midst of them. That gives me prophetic insight that the spirit of the Lord wants to move in the midst of strategic alliances of the assemblies of uh, and brotherhoods and fellowships of godly people this year and unity unity needs to be a high priority for the body of king jesus because jesus wants to show up within our midst you had a uh, you told me a uh, dream recently about this mm. i did um 
I had a dream that that I walked into a building and there was a group of very strong men who were all terrified over something that they were watching on television. And I said, what are you guys watching? And they were all terrified. And they said, we're watching something called Yellowstone. Now, there's a television show that is called Yellowstone, and I thought that, that, I thought that, that was what they were watching. But when I looked at the television, it wasn't, Yellow, it wasn't Yellowstone the TV show. It was Yellowstone National Park, and there was a threat of a tremendous seismic event. Mm-hmm. And they were like, this isn't good. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon me, and I yelled out to this group of men, do not be afraid of terrifying things. And then it was over with. I recognized right then that there are some that there are some very scary things on the horizon. And God Almighty is speaking to you and I that anytime that we are among the brothers, that we are to instruct and we to exhort and we're to help each other to say, do not be afraid of terrifying things. This is a time for us to be careful what we put our eyes on and what it is that we are afraid of, because Jesus, Jesus wants to be made manifest within our midst. And it's a very important time to watch our words. And uh, as a matter of fact, you prove this from these two calendars. Explain that. Well, whenever you see these two calendars together, one of the things that you see is that light is a tremendous part of that. Now, whenever I'm talking about light, I'm talking about what is made manifest and the light of revelation. Um, An interesting part of that is actually the number 22. And again, we're, we're moving into the 22nd year of the 21st century. And the number 22 is a number that represents light or light making manifest. Okay. Like, how is that? Well, the word light is in the book of John exactly 22 times. And the 22nd time in the book of John, he says, he says, the, he says, I am the light of the world. Uh, the book of Revelation, Revelation light actually has 22 chapters in it. There's 22 epistles in the New Testament. Again, that's light within the, within the lampstand in the tabernacle, there's 22 almonds on the seven different branches, right? So, so it represents light. It represents revelation. It represents the light coming on or light making manifest. How we line up our mouth with God Almighty will be made manifest during this, during this decade of the pay or the mouth, right? So when I say the pay, I'm talking about the number 80, right? Which is one of those, which is one of those numbers, but it's also a Hebrew letter that is called hey, that it, that is called pay, and it represents the mouth, what we speak. As soon as we came into this new decade, brother. For some that aren't following you, we're in 5782. The moment we came into the 80s of 5782, it was the decade of the pay, the mouth. Okay, go ahead. So, yes, sir, we're in a decade of lining up our mouth with the Lord. We're in a decade of, okay, it is very important that we that we be mature and not immature when it comes to the words that we speak and how we speak it, because it matters more during this time than ever, ever, ever before. Our words need to be seen. Our voice needs to be seen. Like, well, your voice can't be seen. Yes. In the book of Revelation, he said, I turned to see the voice. Right? He didn't turn to hear the voice. He turned to see the voice. And this is a time where literally the hearts of men are going to become repentive as they turn to see the voice or as they turn to see what's made manifest out of what you and I are speaking. Uh, you know, you were talking a little bit earlier about the word light. Hmm. When I hear that word, I think of the glory, Amen. the glory of God. And if I'm hearing you right, even in the numbers, this new move of God's spirit is going to hit this year. Let it be. Let I, it be I in the name it. of King Jesus. I, be, I, be, I believe with every fiber of my being that uh, there has to be God. We have watched the devil make his moves. Mm. Now it's God's turn. And it's yes. going to be the light of God, the glory of God on humanity as we speak his words. That's what I get out of your teaching. 
Thank you. Well, you know what? That's a good word, brother. And I agree with that. And I am saying, I'd like to say to everybody that is watching that this is a good day to be alive. It's not an easy day to be alive, but it is a good day. And this is a day to be full of hope. If we are not full of hope, then we are under the influence of a lie. And we need to be bound and determined that we're going to be full of the Holy Spirit, that we're going to seek it, that we're going to secretly seek him and find him. And we're going to publicly demonstrate him because arise and shine for the light has come. And that is a word for this new season. Tell me, put it all together just before we get to this next phase. Put these two years together in reference to the year of the mouth and the year of the light. So I want to actually give you a scripture that ties it all together. Okay. And you're going to love this. Are you ready for this, Sid? Because you're going to laugh. I got my seatbelt on. I'm tightening. Okay. Get ready. Get all ready, right. brother. It's Job 22, 28. So it's Job 2, 2, 2, 8. And this is what it says. You shall declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine upon all your ways. That, that is the word for this day and this season. And that's what both calendars are screaming at us is Job 22, 28, that you will declare a thing and light will be with you in, in all of your ways. That is the word of God. And, and you know what? So many people are emphasizing the opposite. It, look, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? That's the word of God. I am agreeing that that light will be all around me. 24 7 and uh, yeah there'll be things happening to my left and my right but they're not gonna come and touch me amen amen i i'm going to be a hope fanatic i'm going to be full of hope i'm going to be full of joy i'm going to be full of the light of the word of god and so light shall shine on all your ways job 22 28 says because you will declare a thing that's what it says you, you, we, uh, we've made special arrangements to to get the uh, digital download of your brand new book. It's it's called Forty Breakthrough Declarations, and these are these are powerful prayers to heal past hurts, make future provision, and invite Jesus into your timeline. And as a matter of fact, I'm reading. Uh, uh, some of the things that you believe God does through this book, it'll release heaven's healing power. It'll reverse the enemy in his tracks. It'll exchange pain of the past, your past, for your good future. What's your good future? Did you know there's a book of life? And in this book of life, God himself saw your future. And everything in that book, it was God's heart to be good in your life, everything in that book. It's the devil's job to get you to deviate from all of the good. But somehow, declaring God's word is like a magnet for that good to be attracted to you. Can you tell me, what, how did God move on you to do this book? Well, I wanted you just to make it very practic a very practical way that included declarations and then actually had a prayer at the end of every segment of declarations. I wanted to put it in small pieces so that it would be very easy and convenient to carry it out because I, I honestly, I just want to help people declare the word of God and learn how to pray. And so these, this is actually a 40-day book. You can do this for 40 days in a row, you can do like a seven day challenge or a 21 uh, day challenge, or you can actually go through all 40 days and declare the declarations and pray the prayers and see God Almighty bring redemption into every single time frame. That's what it, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Oh, well, there are a few more things that you're doing in this book. Divine reversals of hurt, mm -hmm. shame, and pain for your past. And this is where it gets amazing. Not your pre past and present, <clears throat> but your future. You don't have to face those same giants in the future if you That's know right. how to take care of them. If, uh, and replace hope and healing for all trauma that you've gone through in your life. And as you just said, bring redemption into every arena of your life. 
Those are bold statements, but I can tell you, I have been spending more time than I ever have confessing God's Word, and I'll probably talk about this soon, but I've been doing this for wisdom, for, uh, you know, the, the chil- you mentioned this, the uh, children of Issachar uh, knew, knew the times and the seasons for what Israel was to do. Well, that means that you can be, you can have the wisdom of, of Issachar. Well, I've been confessing this, Troy, and you know what? It's working. I'm beginning Amen. to have wisdom way beyond my pay grade. <laughs> 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 well, you know what, brother? Wisdom is given to us if we ask for it. We're supposed to ask for that. And we're also, whenever we declare the things, we are literally, it's one of the ways that you line up your heart with God's heart is you line up your mouth with God's mouth. Because it says, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Do you know that out of, out of everything that amazes me about the, per, about the person of King Jesus and the humanity of, Jean, of, of, of King Jesus is how he dealt with John. And at the Last Supper, John literally put his head on his chest while he was eating, while he was there. And I'm like, why would he allow him to do that? It's because he's saying, I'll never stop anybody from wanting to get in sync with my heartbeat. Where he literally put his ear on the chest of King Jesus. He wanted to hear his heart. said, I want to be like that. And I want people to be able to look at me and say, why do you have so much hope? And I want to have a ready and prepared answer for that. So a big part of that is just lining up with how I pray, how I declare, and how I understand that there's nothing in my timeline that owns me. And I'll say that to everybody that's watching, listen, there's nothing in your timeline that owns you. God Almighty made time. He, he created time. He can step into time. He can redeem it. You don't have to be owned or chained to the trauma of your past. You don't have to be fearful of your future if you know that Jesus is in all those places. He's so good and he's so willing to give you a different past, present, and future because you're lining up because you're lining up your heart with him right now. I know that to be a fact. Well, this exclusive digital download that we're making available, 40 breakthrough declarations, powerful prayers to heal past hurts, make future provision, and invite Jesus into your timeline. You can get it instantly. Uh, and, you know, there are paper shortages, but God knew about it. That's why we have digital downloads now. Just go to sidroth.org slash Troy. That's S-I-D-R-O-T-H dot O-R-G slash T-R-O-Y. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something, Troy. Like you, I am so looking forward to this coming year. I believe I, I almost feel like a racehorse that hasn't been able to race for the last couple of years. I am more than ready to get into the race. Uh, but, and it's going to happen next year. I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to do it. And I, I, I'm so looking forward to the outpouring of God's Spirit. And there are people watching us right now that are depressed. They hope they're going to heaven they don't have any assurance. They've never had an experiential uh, knowledge of God. Uh, and and, and I'm, I want to pray for those people right now. If you'll repeat this prayer out loud, and it's very important to do it out loud because what we've been talking about, spoken words, that's what changes things for the good or for the bad in your life. You're snared by the words of your mouth, it says in Proverbs. Well, you are snaring good also by the words of your mouth. This is the best good you can do right now. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my sins and I am clean. And now that I am clean, just because of your goodness, God, you're so good, God, I ask you to come and live inside of me. And I ask that, just like Moses prayed, show me your glory. Show me your goodness in the land of the living. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Troy Brewer, the time man. <laughs> oh, man, what a great privilege. And I just, I pray in the name of King Jesus that this is a huge season of signs and miracles and wonders and having dreams and visions and prophecies and full of hope. And I love you guys. And I love you so much, Sid. Thank you, brother. No, you know what? I can't say goodbye to you yet. The presence of God is getting stronger and stronger mm, on this show. Feeling it right now. Uh, me too. And, and, uh, and, and I, I, I'm... God, what do you want us to do? Oh, Holy Spirit, we love you so much. We welcome you here. We yes. welcome your manifest presence here to be with us and to be made manifest across time, across space. Let there be healings in the name of King Jesus. Let there be any form of anxiety go in the name of King Jesus. I declare supernatural sanity supernatural sanity and and stability that only comes from the rock of your salvation in the name of king jesus father i thank you lord god i'm i'm seeing people in beds that are crying and they're feeling the presence of the lord the spirit of the most high god is going right into your room right now and you're you're like man this is jesus this is jesus yes yes my friend the lord is there for you right now he is there for you he sees you he loves you Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And this is just a foretaste of what is coming this coming year. This is going to be the best year of your life. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something else. When the glory is here, with the word of God spoken, that's when things happen. And God says, by his stripes, by him paying the price for all of your sicknesses, all of your sins, all of your pains. You are healed, past, present, and future. You are healed. And if you will just start thanking God for the healings that he's giving in your body, it's yours. This is your moment. In Yeshua's name, amen.